Welcome to I'd Play That for a Dollar, World 1-1 podcast, newest budget-friendly podcast. I am your host, Larry the Bearded Wonder. Joining me this week are my friends, Chris John. Hey, uh, And Todd Oxtra. Hello. Uh, World uh, World 1-1 powers this podcast, as well as many other great podcasts that you can find on all your favorite podcatchers, including, and especially, Good Pods, the best place to podcast. We are the uh, the Internet's premier budget-friendly gaming podcast, where we talk about games that we got a hold of for a dollar or less and let you know if we'd play that for a dollar or suffer a fate worse than death wanting our nickel back. This week, let's uh, let's jump into the rapid roundtable, uh, rapid fire reviews. Uh, who wants to go first? Todd, Chris, what what you feeling? Should we flip a coin? Rock paper scissors? <laughs> I'll Ooh, go first. That nickel? All right. <laughs> oh yeah, I, you know I don't even have that right. verb together. No, no, uh, it's been a tough week, my friend. No, just kidding. Um, yeah, I'll start. Uh, so the game I picked is a mortal redneck, and for a long time we kept saying eternal redneck because I think Doom reminded me of that. Oh well. It's a Dude, you told me you were doing this, and I've been dying to hear about this for weeks now. <laughs> it's it's an interesting game. My son and actually actually I we both played the game. We both talked about, it, and he gave me a different perspective on it, which which is great. So, uh, Immortal Redneck is made by Crema Games. Uh, it is twenty dollars on PC and consoles, and um, I actually got it free from. Uh, ooh ooh, where did I get it free from? It's it's either Amazon Prime Gaming or or one of the three, but I, I but I I will try to remember where I got it from. But regardless, um, it was free uh, for me to get this game, and um, I describe this game as Serious Sam meets Rogue Legacy, with f bombs and cartoonish art style set in Egypt. So okay. yeah, so it is a rogue like FPS. You do have skill trees, and you have nine potential god classes uh, that you could switch between. And they have different abilities and, and weapons, um, and it's a procedurally generated type of game um, with the levels. Um, you start off as a redneck who gets captured by and killed, and you are resurrected by Egyptian gods as a mummy. So you are still a full-on redneck. Dropping f bombs, having a good time, but now you have to beat three pyramids and three bosses without dying to move on. But every time you do die, I mean, I would say this: the game is all about dying, getting money, and using it against your skill tree. So it's that type of game, but it is procedurally generated. So no pyramid in the rooms are the same. But this is all about fast combat, uh, very agile, very accurate very fun combat um, that's really fun to play. And you're, you're taking on basically mythological Egyptian monsters. You've got sphinxes. You've got, you know, uh, different beasts and demons. You're, you're, you're attacking with your different uh, weapons. Like, so you've got some standard weapons like uh, shotguns, rocket launchers, those type of things. Then you've got, like, mythological weapons, like an Ankh that shoots forward, like Ankh blasts. Then you have, like, some weird, like, power-up that had like these these um, I don't even know what they they were birds that they were they were like flaming birds and you could launch them out and they were kind of heat seekers but you had other uh, depending on the the god you you use and you can power up them as well like you and you get like traverse elements one you get like you turn the enemies into meat that gives you more power ups so it's very cool it's a, it's a neat game and you have to go like seven levels if you get to the top of the seven level of the of the pyramid you take on the boss. But it's hard. It gets harder it's, each level you go up. It's, it's just funny because like I, fantastic. Yeah, I, I'm looking at this. Great too. Yeah, it looks really cool. And then when you when you said that it, the game is called <laughs> Immortal Redneck, and I was like, okay. And then you said it takes place in Egypt. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> it's <was> very <laughs> confusing. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, don't confuse it with Redneck Rampage, which is an old game, the Redneck title too. But yeah, it, 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 the art style is very like cartoonish too. But it's but it's fun. It's and like I said, the gameplay is fantastic in regards to a shoot FPS, like an old school FPS, like Serious Sam or Doom or Quake or something like that. Um, and it's very, it does get vertical where you have a lot of jumping as well um, to play along on your level. So I, I enjoyed it. So uh, I think this was definitely uh, I I'd, I'd you know play that for a dollar. Nice. Chris, this almost sounds like a, a roguelike you might actually not hate. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, possibly. 
very possible. But speaking of uh, roguelites, uh, my game for this week is a roguelike, I guess. Where is it? No, 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 it's not. No, I take that back. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. You tell me. The game is called <laughs> Neo, the complete edition. Mm, it is a okay. Souls-like game. Is that a roguelike? Are those kind of games roguelites? Or they're just <laughs> their own genre of Souls style, whatever. Sure. I don't know. I don't think Neo falls into that category per se. It's more Souls like, oh, no, I think. You, yeah. 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 I don't know. Okay. The game the, it's just that the enemies reset every time you save. It's not, not the, the, right, it's right. not procedurally generated, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's not procedurally oh. generated, but um, I got this game um, from the Epic Game Store. It was free, um, but the base price for it on Epic and Steam is forty nine ninety nine right now. And um, yeah, it's a uh, well. I thought it was. T- it takes place in feudal Japan, but your character starts off in like a in a prison in London. Oh, I don't know. It was it was really weird. Uh, I was actually pretty excited to play this game because I've heard some good things about it, and um, uh, unfortunately, that that stopped as soon as I started playing the game. Because, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, I'll take that back. Like I, I I did enjoy it when I first started playing the game. Uh, the combat felt really good. Uh, the game, uh, you, you, there, there was there wasn't a like very punishing. Uh, it, level of difficulty. I felt like it kind of ramped up slowly in terms of like the amount of p- characters that you fight against, and um, you know, like they, they you could see their move sets and stuff like that. But the uh, one thing I, I the reason why I stopped playing it was because the g- the game is so dark, like dark, like visually dark. Like I didn't know where to go because I I basically just kept running around in the in a circle. And I was like, where do I go to can get to the next part of this this uh, this level? And it was uh I got frustrated and I was like, forget this game, I'm done. So I mean, I'm sure there's probably more interesting stuff after, but maybe but my problem was I I couldn't even get to the next part of the game. So uh unfortunately I'm not playing I'm not paying this paying for this game. I have not I will I want my nickel back. I would say what I'm hearing Chris say is uh, bring on the Nickelback. Yeah, I want my Nickelback. Look please. at this photograph. Is what they say. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, this game sorry. reminds Chris of, uh, you know, it's it's how it reminds Chris that he wants Nickelback. Well, I think that's what we should have to do. If we get, say I want my Nickelback, we have to actually say, say a lyric from a Nickelback song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. So... Uh, this week, I I sank into a game called Mech Rage, like you know, big old mech, yeah. And uh, you know, I, I raged into this game, and I'm not gonna lie, when I started playing it, uh, my first thought was, yeah, I don't know, I'm if I'm gonna be feeling this because the the color scheme seemed very bland, uh, not not enough kind of pop to it. A lot of grays and black and just dark hues that all kind of felt like they m- just muddled together because visually the game was uh, kind of on the dark, like dimly lit side, made it a little tough to see and kind of a pain in the ass to play. But uh, the the more I played and my eyes started to adjust, apparently, um, my, my issues with the color palette still remain. It, it could have done with something a little more vibrant to help it out but i I got to this weird point where i started actually really getting into it and then by the end of like each section or each chunk of the game uh where you know kind of breaks up and lets you go into the the hub to kind of upgrade your gear and everything i'm like you know what i'm ready to go again and then i would start the next section and within like five to ten minutes, I'm like, I think this is probably going to be my last one, and I'm ready to put this down. And it would repeat itself again. And by the time I got to the end of it, I'm like, all right, let's go for another again. I <laughs> like, I had to stop myself to get out of this loop. But it's a top-down style, uh, twin stick shooter kind of a la Smash TV, Robotron X type deal. Um, 
and there, there's not a whole ton of variety in it, but somehow it, it just, it feels good. I think my biggest complaint was that when taking damage, you don't really get any sort of feedback that tells you so. And the life bar up in the corner is so small that it's real hard to notice when you're getting hit. Like there's no sound effect. There's no vibration on the controller to indicate. And so I'd, I'd be taking damage and not realize it and suddenly die and be like, what the fuck happened here? <laughs> and then I realized what was happening. I'm like, Oh, I'm the idiot. But, um, it, it really wasn't bad though. And it, like I said, it, it kept me in this loop where I really wanted to kind of keep playing. And I think it's one of those where it's, it's great if you've got 20 or 30 minutes and truth be told, the writing isn't amazing, but there's some good, like, kind of quippy, enjoyable back and forth stuff in the in the dialogue with some of the characters that I really enjoyed. There was a couple uh, couple little snippets that were good enough. I screenshotted it, and I'm like, I'm saving that for something. I don't know what yet, but it's gonna come up. So, but no, there there were some good kind of like one liner cracks in there, and I, I was I, I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. I think I paid like. Uh, it was a handful of pocket change. It was maybe like 89 cents on the eShop on Switch. Um, and because I've purchased it on Switch, it's now no longer showing me what the actual fucking price is. <laughs> but, because uh, it does that. But no, I mean, for for a dollar or under, you don't know, no, I'd definitely play that for a dollar. I actually had a really good time with it. And it's one that I think, you know, it's, it's a good little time sink to be able to go back to. Uh, it could use a few things that would really step it up, but... For the dollar, you know, for the less than a dollar that I paid for, I'm not mad at it. I, I actually had some fun with it. So, um, but no, that's uh, that's Mech Rage. I picked that up on the eShop on the Switch. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find somewhere that's got like the the regular list price for it, just so I can kind of put it out. It's Ten there. bucks on Steam, Larry. I just looked. There you go. That probably sounds about right. I don't know if I'd go full tilt ten dollars on it, but. For the uh, you know for the less than a dollar I paid for, I was actually pretty happy with it. I had some fun with it. So, if nothing else, like I said, the writing uh, and the dialogue between the characters when it does come up, kind of in between stages and stuff, was actually a lot of fun. Hmm. I'm surprised it actually had a story. So that's kind of cool that it did. Yeah, I I, yeah. When I looked at the video. I'm like, this looks like uh, yeah, it doesn't look like it has a story. <laughs> Which no, I don't it know what actually that means. does. <laughs> It, it actually point, does. Chris, you're not absolutely right. Like I don't, great, yeah. but okay. the dialogue is fun. Oh, so, okay. The story's generic, but the dialogue is actually pretty decent. Oh, okay. So there, there's some fun quippy shit in there that I really liked. So I would definitely go back to that, and that was easily worth my dollar. Um, so if you can find it on a good sale, definitely, definitely pick that up for ten bucks. I would stay away, but no, I'd play it for a dollar. Absolutely. Uh, I'll, nice. it's something I will probably continue to pick up, uh, again and again when, you know, I've got like 20 or 30 minutes to kill. So, but, and I think, yeah, let's see immortal redneck and Neo and yeah, we made it all the way around and I didn't miss anybody. We did it. <laughs> Congrats. I, everybody. I knew something didn't seem right, but Kathy wasn't here. I'm like, wait, no, I did get this covered. Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think maybe our new order should be next episode. If someone had a Nickelback, they go first. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. So, That's fair. All right. Well, I want to say thank you to my friends, Todd and Chris for coming and hanging out. Thank you to everybody that dialed in and listened this week. Uh, you know, you can find I'd play that for a dollar and so much more out on the World One One Podcast Network, which you can uh, drop into your RSS feed on your favorite podcatcher everywhere from World One One dot Podbean dot com, all the way to you know Google Podcasts and Apple Podcasts, and especially and most definitely Good Pods, the best place to podcast. And uh, you can also check us out and get in touch with us over on the Twitters at Play for a Dollar. And uh, with that said, you know. I'd Play That for a Dollar is a production of World 1-1 Podcast and powered by the World 1-1 Podcast Network, where you should press start to engage your mind. We'll see you all next week. Peace!